The Chinese for centuries had successfully kept the Europeans from dominating their society. The British had traded with the Chinese, buying their porcelain and silk, but the Chinese did not want anything European. However, the British began to produce opium, heroin, from Indian poppies and sold it legally in Europe. Many Chinese also became addicted to the drug, and their government destroyed copious amounts in British storehouses. The king rulers declared that drug traders would be beheaded. The British sent ironclad gunboats to shell coastal cities. The Chinese did not have any defenses. Their military was weak, and the Chinese lost the First Opium War of 1839 to 1842. The resulting Treaty of Nanjing allowed Great Britain to gain the city of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a coastal city in the southern part of China. It also allowed for the lower tariffs for British imports. Additionally, British subjects were granted extraterritoriality, or the right of Europeans to trial by their own laws in foreign countries. So if they committed a crime, they would be tried in Great Britain's law rather than Chinese law. In 1856, the British believed the king had violated the treaty and came back with the French and marched to Beijing, occupying the Forbidden City. The king signed another agreement allowing for Shanghai and other cities to have special living zones for Europeans in Chinese coastal cities. The defeated Manchus initiated reforms and taxed the peasants who rebelled against the emperor during the Taiping Rebellion of 1850-1864. This massive rebellion against the king was led by Hong Zien, who claimed to be the younger brother of Jesus Christ. He came to earth to create a heavenly kingdom of great peace. A force of 20,000 defeated a king army. They then advanced on Nanjing, declaring it their capital. However, the leadership became bogged down while the elite of the society started guerrilla tactics against them. The emperor needed assistance by the French and the British, and a joint army invaded Nanjing, and the Taiping committed suicide, mostly by burning themselves rather than surrendering. Many educated Chinese thought the best thing to do was adapt Western technology and science. This era was called the self-strengthening movement. Western books started to translate to Chinese. Many Chinese traveled to learn new technologies in the U.S. and Europe. They were countered by conservatives that wanted to keep the Confucian system, which called for self-reliance away from foreigners. They were led by Empress CZ, a concubine that was the real power behind the throne. She was also known as the Dowager Empress and was against building railroads and warships. Instead, she wanted to restore old palaces. The Japanese started to become a regional power and sought trading privileges in China also. A revolution occurred in Korea and the Japanese invaded and fought against China. Following their victory in the Sino-Japanese War of 1894-1895, Japan gains Korea and Taiwan. You can see the Japanese islands and just to the west is the peninsula of Korea and to the southwest is the island of Formosa also known as Taiwan. Other European countries sought to carve up China. Russia, Germany, and France all had their certain spheres of influence. The United States feared the loss of American commerce and submitted the Open Door Notes in 1900 calling for the end of European domination over China. However, educated Chinese attacked foreign embassies during the Boxer Rebellion of 1900 to 1901. The Empress backed the Boxers so European, Japanese, and American troops arrived and suppressed the boxers and kept their soldiers on Chinese soil. The Europeans demanded 450 million ounces of silver, twice the annual income of the treasury from China. China was now ready for revolution.